you don't hire people for skill. You hire them for attitude and you train for skill. Right. And Gustavo outgrew the ortho office, right? And we often say that the people who are the best often will outgrow the office. But lesson number one, everybody, if you have a patient in your office who's amazing, who you love, who you love hanging out with, who you think's positive and brings a lot of culture to your office, maybe they want to work with you. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Orthopreneur's Podcast. Today's a special day. <laughs> I'm already laughing. He's already laughing. If you're watching this on video, anybody who knows us knows there's like a bromance here um, that's gone on for a while. But I'm, I, it's my absolute pleasure to, to welcome to the show uh, Gustavo Sanchez. Welcome, Gustavo. Hey, what's going on, friend? Yeah. It's so <laughs> as, as everybody knows, I always let the person who I'm interviewing start by telling us a little bit about how they ended up where they are now. And would you agree with me, Gustavo, that your story is definitely taken some turns along the way, right? Absolutely. Amazing turns. Um, some oh, sharp turns. turns as well along the way. <laughs> but but I think uh, once we get into the story of, of where you started, mm -hmm. where you are now, the reason I wanted Gustavo on is because, as you'll find out in a minute, we have a relationship that's a little different than the average relationship with the people I speak to on this on this podcast. I've had my dad on here. I've had Doug Shaw, my partner on here. I've had people I'm very close to on here. But I think Gustavo's relationship with me is always going to be a little bit different than most out there. And as you'll find out uh, as we move through this. So I'm warning everybody out there, including Gustavo, <laughs> I do not know where this is headed. I, I don't even know why we're, we're doing this, but I'm just happy to be here. So yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great information I think that you bring to the table on so many levels, whether it's for doctors, team members, um, or just anybody who wants to hear your story. I think there's some great value to it. And so let's start, as we always do on the show, tell people a little bit about, you know, in that elevator speech, if you will, how you ended up where you are now. I started off as a patient in your practice in Louisville, and I remember um it was to do the lingual. Uh, braces and yeah. we went in there we did that and how many years ago was that that was about I think it was either three or four years ago I think it was more than three years ago because it was it was way before COVID right yes it definitely was before COVID and yeah so let's say yeah we'll say somewhere three and a half to four years ago yeah and so I remember every time I was going into your office and, and to get a checkup or whatever you and I, I always tell people you and I always laughed and got along and we just, it was just a, like you, you hit it on the head. It was a bromance for sure. It's so it was, and it was crazy because your office is like an hour away from my home. And so I would go there every time I was going there, we were getting along and then found out that you were needing somebody to help within the lab in the, um, the digital realm. And so I remember like it was yesterday, you and I sat in an office and um, that same day I was transitioning and I was given a job offer and you and I sat and, and you told me what it was that you were looking for. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you said that you were able to fine tune to perfection every single department within the practice, except in the, in the lab. And like you had it, but there was always something. And so I remember when we spoke, um, the long story is I, I remember saying, well, I, I'll do whatever you need um, because I love what you do. I love what you bring to the to the ortho industry um, with orthopreneurs and how you're on stage and you just you just command this this just respect in your presence. So I was that's what I gravitated towards. And as I'm sure all of your listeners do. Oh, too every well. one of them, everyone, including <laughs> every my single my one kids, of them, every one it's of them so gravitates cool. directly to that. <laughs> but you do so remember you, you did have a conversation with me around that time about how one day you wanted to be on stage I and did. that's where you've been, and you've been on stage yes. before, before that. And you wanted to be on stage and you wanted to speak. And I'm like, well, just do this position, join, <clears throat> take this position over. I think you've got what it takes and great things are going to happen. And so, and what I love about that is I would tell people, um, so I sat in this office with you and I remember I said, you asked me, well, what is it that you want from me? And I'll tell, and I said, well, better yet, let me tell you what it is I want to give you. And it was, I, I, I want to make sure that I'm looking out for you, 
your practice. I want to do everything I can to help you become successful in the practice, financial, everything. And you looked at me and you said, okay, but what is it that you want from me? Well, I want the exact same thing. But the thing is that I always try to tell people is I don't want to just look out for those things for me because I I feel like sometimes that's how the secrets happen. And so how about you look out for me and I look out for you? And so you said, okay, what do we need to do? If, If I have your word and you just pulled your hand out and you said, all right, let's shake on it. And I started that next week. And yeah. that's how quickly, and I remember, I remember asking you like, what the hell do you want with me? Cause I don't know anything about ortho. I was never a clinical assistant. I don't speak the language. And you do you, now. I remember you said, don't worry about that. I'll teach you. I'll show you. And it is the story is amazing. And you're right. We can go on and on about this. So I'll, I'll be mindful today. But anybody that knows me knows that it's hard for me to just keep it short. So well, you but did yeah. a great job. And but Thanks. but again, there's there's lesson number one, right? I always tell people out there, you know I'm an advocate, collect good people, right? Even yes. if you don't have a spot for somebody, you see somebody, you anybody who knows Gustavo knows he's arguably one of the most positive-minded people on the planet. Like he goes through the world, everybody who's met him in my office, people have come in and visit the office, they come and see the office, and then they end up stuck in his room for like four hours. Like, didn't you come to see the practice? No, no, no. Gustavo is amazing. And, and again, A, I love collecting good people, right? You, you don't hire people for skill. You hire them for attitude and you train for skill. Right. And, and in an unfortunate nature of today, it's very rare to find Gustavo type individuals who are looking for a job as a dental assistant or a clinical manager or a front desk or office manager, or TC. It's they hard. And 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 spoiler alert, Gustavo outgrew the ortho office, right? And we often say that the people who are the best often will outgrow the office. But lesson number one, everybody, if you have a patient in your office who's amazing, who you love, who you love hanging out with, who you think's positive and brings a lot of culture to your office, maybe they want to work with you. And right. maybe they want to work with you for short term as a waypoint for the next stage of their life. Because again, um, as long as you can have a positive impact in someone's life and help them become better, then you have a relationship like we have, which is you're no longer in my office. Again, spoiler alert. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Ever since that one incident with the restraining order where you had to leave. <laughs> I kid, I kid. There was no restraining kind order. Of. But and and so let's talk a little bit first about what you do now. How would you best describe uh three and a half years or four years after we met? And you're no longer in my office. What is it exactly you do and who do you do it for? Yeah, well, um, first, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I wouldn't have what I have, these opportunities that have been given to me, had it not been for you, Dr. Krieger. BS. Um, BS. You, you no, would have had these opportunities in another fashion, in another industry, because a guy yeah. like you, Gustavo, is going to go, no. ahead, thank you. I accept no, it. But I, I no, take thank it. you. Thank you. I, no, thank you. The, no, thank you. And the, <laughs> and the, um, this the is what it was like community. to work with us people, just for the record. <laughs> this is why the rest of my team was going to just quit because this Boy, is, we, this is Gustavo and me all day long. Um, and it was just a joy. Those are the but, but, things that I do miss is our, our conversations and our laughter and our jokes and the inside jokes. But, uh, yes. but what do, what do you do now? So I'm actually a clinical education specialist, a CES for ULAB Systems, um, which was the software that we used in the office for the the better part of three years when I was there. But what does being a CES mean? Is Well, for me, it means I'm given the privilege to um, do Zoom meetings and go do on-site visits throughout the United States for um, a lot of orthodontists in this community. And so I will go into their office um, because they either have the ULAB software, they're interested in this software, and let's say they have it, but they're just trying to get more familiar with it. It is my job to put into context um, the value of the tools and how to use them so that they can allow their practice to go to another level. Even so, um, this this transition, this transition of of kind of, I tell people that, you know, in order for you to to receive the more, you got to learn to let go of what you're currently holding on to. And yeah. so, <clears throat> so what happens is in some of these offices that I go into, they tend to hold on to everything um, because that's what they're used to. They're used to kind of just 
carrying the weight of even running their own printers, purchasing their own resin, um, <clears throat> or submitting to you assist, loading up their STLs or scan, whatever the case is. And so all I want to do is get these doctors to know, hey, you know, you can rely on someone else on your office to do this. And this yeah. is what I did for my doctors. Yeah. Um, you said something that was so, so powerful, uh -oh. has never left me. And, oh, and so, and I, and I tend to take this wherever I go. And that is, I remember when you sat with me and you, you said, Gustavo, if you are to do these things along with all of the other things that I was doing, right. With the, within the aligner software industry, you said, if you do these things for me, Gustavo, I will be able to have my weekends back with my family. Yeah. And, uh, um, that, that really hits me hard. And so I, I don't look at, I guess for me, when I talk to the team, I don't want them to just think like a, a supervisor, a manager, but if I can get you to think like an owner, yeah, then, then you, your, your world will change. And so, because I was a patient and I came in, I, I and your wife is a patient. <laughs> yeah. My wife was a patient. My daughter was a patient. Yep. <laughs> and so, um, and what was crazy about that is, and by the way, as cool as Gustavo is, you got to meet his wife. Crystal she's is she's amazing. She's mean, but she's, she's amazing. Not mean. By the way, Crystal, <laughs> don't listen to what he's saying. He, you're not mean. You're wonderful. Well, I love her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, she, she I, really, they are amazing together. And uh, I'm, I'm a blessed man. I got don't screw it up, wife. Gustavo. Beautiful You'll never life. do better. I'm saying it now. You'll never do better. She's, well, clearly. <laughs> she's amazing. But I want, but I want, I do want to go back to something you said earlier because you said you need to let go of certain things and it's difficult. Right. And That's I right. still remember when Gustavo was with us, he moved up the ranks from digital tech, which is by no means, by any stretch of the imagination, and a demoralizing position. It's not a a uh, small position. It was important for him to take over our centralized lab for our three offices and manage. And we'll get into a minute about what it was you did and how people out there can do that in their offices. But you moved up to becoming the digital tech who really oversaw a lot of the digital. And then we moved you around COVID time into like a managerial position where you could help run the offices with us while doing the digital side of it. And then I remember you were really indispensable in the office and you came to me and said, I've got this offer. And, and it, you know, I have an opportunity here and they don't want to step on your toes, Dr. Krieger. You know, they want to, they reached out to me first. Would it be okay, you know, to talk and we won't do it if it offends you, which is really a class act by you lab. I want to say that actually, out loud for them, not, for them not to try to just poach a great person, but to actually ask permission first, which I would, I said, yes, instantly. I said, absolutely. But I remember when we sat in the, in that little green, that little room where the x-ray unit used to be. Right. You and I sat with the door closed and we're talking about opportunities. I remember I said to you, you know, don't do it. I think it'd be really good if you were. And I realized it was the selfishness of me talking. And you remember I pulled you aside the next day and I said, truth of the matter is as much as I want you here, you need to take this job. You need to do this. This is really important for you. I think right. it's the next level. And, and that was the letting go part of it. Because on one hand, it's so hard to find good people in this world. It's impossible to find another Gustavo that easily to run run a price, to be a friend, to, to to have somebody you trust, somebody who really is a good communicator, somebody who's positive. But then on the other side of it, it's like the old Sting song: "If you love something, set it free." Right? And I just knew that you being in an, in my office, no matter what we could do to try to move you up the chain of command, there was nothing that was ever going to give you the freedom, which is what you really needed like what you ended up getting. And so it was really a joy to see you blossom into becoming somebody who stands on stage. Since that time, you've been a speaker for them. You've traveled the country. By the way, you lab, if you're listening, let the guy see the world. He doesn't need to just see the country. Um, and, and even more fun, when we ran our summit, we reached out to you and said, hey, Gustavo, there's nobody we'd rather have run the team track other than you. And, and you did it seamlessly and did an amazing job for that. That was so, the catalyst right there. I, it was, well, so, I think you were already involved in the company by that point, weren't you? With no with one, lab. I was still with you. So, so what the catalyst was when I was the MC for orthopreneurs yeah. that I didn't know anything about. And then um, and you were they, worried about that. What do you want me to do? I, oh my I, gosh. I think it was just a Gustavo. month before go time. And so I just, just let yourself be you and you're going well, to be because fine. your standards are so high. I'm like, what's going on? And so, um, but it worked out. You did it, great. It, it was, it was the best thing. I want to keep, I want to take a couple steps back though. Sure. I, um, 
because you're absolutely right. Um, that's one of the conversations I do have to have um, when I'm on stage or when I'm in an office. And it's just so you know, you lab did not pull me. They, um, I, I sat with. Yeah, Dr. I know everybody. I remember he, everybody was asking, "Did you know that Gustavo went to U Lab?" I'm like, "Yeah." He, <laughs> so I, I, I gave him my blessing. If you remember, I brought you in this office, and I the same one you're talking about. And I said, "Hey, um, I need your blessing." Yeah, like and I was you like I was me, you, you went like this. You, you're like, okay. I gave you the sign <laughs> of the cross, even though I'm yes. Jewish. And you're like, "What are you talking about?" And so, and then I said, I need your blessing to let me go. And so, and then we had this whole conversation. And yeah. what I loved about this is that you, you are truly a man of your word. Since the day I've known you, whether it was to me or anyone in the practice, um, you made it very clear. Hey, listen, if you're not happy here, or if you're looking for a change, whatever it was, talk to me, let me know. And, and we'll, we'll see what we can do to help. And so it, it felt so comforting that I can actually be very transparent with you yep. and, and you help me with this and, and allow me to go to the next level <clears throat> versus not contributing or, or being a barrier. And so I, I love to tell people that when the very first day that when we met was my goal is to look out for you, all I ask is for you to do the same and to be able to sit in front of hundreds of people and say, and he did this, mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's amazing because I got more than a job when I when I became a part of your practice. I, I do feel like this. You got is free a, ortho care. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of, we'll talk later. It's <laughs> my daughter relapsed. Anyway, yeah. so um, and so it's just been one of those things where um, going to in when I tell people, I always want them to know this isn't one who you lab is. And more importantly, this isn't who I am. Um, what I like to let everyone know, especially assistants when they're listening. And that is I'm a, I'm a big believer of how you leave something is how you enter something. Amen, brother. And well so said. I, um, I'm a man of integrity. Um, I, I live in a world of gratitude and, and I'm very grateful and I, I will never, um, you know, tarnish the opportunities that were given to me because of a shortcut. Well, I appreciate that. And, and I hope that people who are listening, who are doctors, allow their team members to hear this conversation, because obviously we have a relationship that not every employer has with every employee. And I'd be a liar if I told you that my relationship was the same with every person who's come through my office. But you know well enough that for, for literally every person who's ever come through our office, who is even remotely decent human being, I have a relationship with them still. Right. And they have no fear of showing their face in the office or coming back and saying hi or saying, hey, will you treat my daughter or my son or whoever it is? Um, and again, I can mention names of people we used to work with. Who I just had a conversation with the other day. It's really important out there that when someone leaves you, like you said, the way you leave something is how you enter it. You should leave with really good intention. And there are people who are bad operators who ghost you and never come back right. you, <laughs> or who have right. three. Oh my God. <laughs> that, we had one employee <laughs> who literally in three days of coming showed up none. Um, <laughs> but hey, lunch into that, uh, too, right? <laughs> if somebody's a good operator, there should be a relationship there that transcends the work relationship. And, and again, I want, I want to go back a little bit about what you did in our office. I think that's a good place for us to jump back in, which is we, we had at the time we had three offices, um, one in, in Rockwall, one in Watauga, one in Louisville, Texas, me and my partner, Doug Shaw. And we'd gotten into the 3D printing game, I don't know, five years ago, four years. It's hard. We, we were in it before you came on board. Right. Uh, and we'd already had a few small printers. We had a few large printers. And, and we were printing, but we weren't doing a lot of in-house aligner stuff. We were, but it was really herky-jerky. It wasn't very smooth. It was, it was, it was, we were all learning on the fly back then, four or five years ago. And we felt the need to bring this kind of unifying theory into it. We had done a lot of bracket removal, right, before giving people their retainers. Uh, we, had, we had used a few different products. I think we used Sure Smile before right. we went to ULab. And right. before Sure Smile, I can't remember what we used before Sure Smile, but there was something we used before that. Um, and then we had ULab. And, and I, were you there when we transitioned into ULab? Or were yeah, we, were I, I, that's funny because I was there. Um, when you had sure smile and you know, sure smile was a great product as well. I, I yeah, again, I, just, 
I have nothing negative at the time. To say about I felt bad about leaving Sure Smile mm-hmm. at the time because I think right. it's a, it's a great product. And right. and again, I don't think I have a negative word to say about it. it just yeah. somehow we transitioned into U Lab, which is kind of funny because had we not, you might not have a job with U Lab today. Absolutely, I wouldn't have the thing again. The things that I have, but what was crazy is that I remember I was extremely resistant uh, to the change because of my. Um, for lack of a better word, uh, vulnerability in this industry and not knowing, I finally felt comfortable and confident in knowing something and to be a benefit. And then all of a sudden we're being told, hey, we're thinking about switching and this is what we're going to do and this is why. And, and it was going to be to ULAB. And, and I remember like kicking and screaming like, no, no, no. And then when we did certain features in there and and the the labeling and whatever the case was, there was quite a few things. I remember walking out, go, ah, oh, that one tool alone was worth the change. It just saved this practice this much money because there were certain things that were taking a little longer in the other one. And so I um absolutely that was the um the big, the big, it was difficult for me to transition. And I remember it just started off with the one office, which was your office. Right, and and I remember office. sitting down going, Hey, I want your other offices. Right. And so in that, and that's the other conversation that I try to have with the team in the practice, which is, you know, it's okay if you initiate the conversation, you right. know? And so I, um, we love, by the way, as employers, we love it when somebody says, I want more responsibility, right? It's so- uncommon <laughs> in today's day and age, but often right. we assume they don't. We don't want to overburden them because we've had a couple of bad apples. But but again, challenge your team. And we were talking before we came on board here about um, about when I asked you to do, you you were learning it, you're trying to figure it out. And what did I say to you about cases? How many cases did I want and what time frame? <laughs> and you had told me, I remember, because I was still hesitant to touch the software. And, you and I knew he could do it. So like, what I, happened I is- I knew you could do it. So first of all, if if- we had a, um, we have our morning huddles every morning. And, and if you don't have one in your practice, I highly recommend you have one. They are yeah. so beneficial. Um, we call it like the, the quick trailer of, of the, of the movie for, right. for the day. Right. And so um, I remember we would go through our, our groups and then you go, okay, Gustavo, I need you to work up two cases um, and have them to me uh, by one o'clock. Which is only five hours. And, so, and I remember being, I remember being so nervous and so stressed out because I overanalyzed everything, and I was afraid because you have this, this view right in your face of these teeth, and and it's tied to a person, and so and you take it serious, and then I remember getting it done, kinda, uh, uh, not right, but we got it, and yeah. so and. And now where I'm at now, where it took me five hours to give you two cases, I can tell you now it takes me five minutes to give you the one. Right. And so because I, I understood your clinical preferences, not just yours, Dr. Shaw's and, and Dr. Rasmussen's as well. I tell people all the time, I, I can look at teeth and know who worked on them just by the setup and the attachments. I can oh, totally. tell because that's the relationship that you end up having with your doctors. But I, I laugh because it took me five hours. And, and what I tell everybody is the only thing that, that the only word that comes to mind, because it's so comical, is that um, you showed me grace. You were extremely patient. And that, that was so valuable. And, and if I could get everybody to understand that um, if you can work on creating an environment where there's freedom from fear, like fear of losing your job, fear of being rejected, fear of being humiliated. And if we can just remove those, it makes it so much easier to have the conversation, to ask the question, and more importantly, to be vulnerable. And so- But how do you get there? But how do you, so, so, so let's pause there for a second, because again, you're not my team member anymore. I mean, in my heart, you are. I will always be your team member. I even told you lab when they hired me, he's always going to be my doctor. And if he ever needs anything from me, I will be there. So and if, and, and if he ever disagrees with the company, I must go with Dr. Krieger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 let's, but, but let's go back for a second. Because um, I think there's a conversation there. There's a lesson there. You know, while you're not my team member anymore in the office, um, you know, it's it's rare to find people who are willing to put aside the ego, the fears, whatever. How does 
how does a team member do, I guess on one side, there's a doctor side of it, where it's our job to make sure that we don't yell at people, that we don't belittle them, that we reward taking chances without putting somebody down and saying, what were you doing? Like, why are you, like, like you understand people, the things I had Gustavo doing in the office, and we'll get more into it. He was everything that I, that nobody else would do. Hey, by the way, we've got this marketing. For those of you out there, he branded, he had a brand, <laughs> he branded <laughs> with a branding iron, like, <laughs> like, like 50 scotch containers that were giving out as gifts, scotch glasses. And, and again, he did everything I asked him to do, but it was always embracing the challenge. You're not going to get yelled at. Who cares if you make it? Sometimes I think I made it too lax. Like, don't worry, it'll be okay. Well, what do you mean it's going to be okay? Like, you trust me that much? Yeah, I trust you that much. But you, you say that, but you've said things where, where I've made mistakes or I've broken something and you go, well, okay. And, and your silence um, was very like, damn it. You know, well, but, but I didn't yell and scream at you. And You're I right, said, oh, hey, you, you know, you broke it. It happens. Let's go on and let, you know, what went wrong? Let's figure out and right. go from there. Right. But, but aside from my side, the ownership side, the leader side, <clears throat> what advice would you give the team members out there who say, you know what? I have been in jobs. I've been yelled at. I've, I've gotten in trouble. Hey, by the way, if I lose this job, I have no rent. I got no car payment. Right. It's easy for him to sit there. He's married to a woman. She's got a job. He's not the sole breadwinner. I'm a mom of three. I'm not going to take a chance because if I take a chance or if I mess up, I've been fired before and I can't afford to get fired. How do you get somebody past that? What advice would you give them? Well, I, um, you said something a second ago, which was about ego. So for me, I, I tended to remind people of, of something that sticks with me, which is we have two choices. We can either feed our ego or we can feed our families. Oof. And so... Strong. And so the thing with that is that I, I remind people that the ego is never satisfied and, and will always crave more. So be careful how you choose. And so I think a lot of the times with individuals is um, it's easy to be a victim. Matter of fact, it's convenient. And so I always want people to know that you cannot find any of the greats that made it to the level that they made it. I don't care if it's um, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional. You don't get to the next level from convenience. It all stems from inconvenience. And so we have to remember that, that the push is needed and it's important. And so when I talk to team members, I want them to know that, you know, when, when you make a phone call or when you have an interaction with the patient, you already know that it could have gone better or um, did you do the right thing? But you know what people don't do? They don't expose it. And so I highly recommend, don't wait for you to be caught. Go and say, hey, this is the conversation that I had with this patient. I just wanted to get another perspective. What do you think? And because what happens is now you're setting yourself up to receive. But it's no different than someone kicking your door down. What are you going to do? You don't know who's coming. So you're going to be ready. You're going to be ready to defend your home. But when someone knocks, you open the door and you invite yeah. them in. We've and had that discussion a lot, you and me. Yeah, we had that discussion a lot of yes, you know, approaching the conversation like you said with grace and with respect, and saying, "Hey," rather than saying, "Dude, who poured the alginate on the floor?" Right? Which do you even know what alginate is? You have no idea, do you? Right. Like that's a telling moment. So, <laughs> 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 I think I it's had... somewhat, I think it's somewhat fitting that my digital tech has no idea what alginate is. The impression material we used to use before scanning to get, you know, molds of teeth. I, oh, find yeah. it, I, I find it funny that I have to explain that to my digital tech. It's That's the beauty. Irony but this is the beauty of this whole conversation is that is that I know I knew nothing. But this is a living, breathing testimony of what you don't know we can teach. But yeah, what you absolutely. cannot teach is personality. Right. I cannot teach you how to be who you are. But <laughs> right. I can teach so, you. I can teach you everything. Else. But but I remember there were conversations of tell me anything that's on your mind. Just make sure you tell it to me. And we had our little rows here and there where you didn't like the way something was said or you right. felt somebody was being disrespectful and you were never afraid to speak it and tell us. And I right. think, again, there's a lesson out there. And if you don't have that relationship with your team members, it can be difficult. And to be honest, there is something out there in that you're a guy and I'm a guy. And it's very easy for me 
to talk to you in a way that I might not talk to a female employee, not because I don't respect them, but because I respect them. There is a difference between a female doctor talking to a female team member and a, a female team member talking to a male. There's just an intergender dynamic that that is just different. And you've seen it at play, even in the kindest, sweetest conversations. And I guess as long as we what are you laughing at? <laughs> I could I could just go on about that. Sometimes my barrier, sometimes the difficulty that I would go through is sometimes I just don't see gender. And so I would just have a conversation. And well, neither do I. But, <laughs> but, so you have, like, but as an owner, you have to be conscious of right, certain indeed. ways. You, I could say things to you, Gustavo. I have said things you have. that I would never, ever <laughs> ever have said to a female, just because of our relationship as friends. Right. And I think it's difficult for a male doctor. I think what I'm trying to get at here, and I've done a very poor job of it, is I think it's very difficult for a male doctor to develop the friendship relationship with, it would be inappropriate for me to have the same friendship relationship with a female employee and, right. and, and in the way that I have with you. And again, it sounds terrible. It's a gender-based thing, but I think it's the same with a female doctor, with a female you know, a uh, employee having a difficult time having the same deep relationship potentially with a male employee, right? right? Because again, there's there's things you can say and do, and 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 I can be alone in a closed door room with you when nobody's around and have a conversation with you when we're the only ones in the office, and right. I would never ever do that with a female employee, right? Right. right. And and so I I think there's a value in in what you said, which is, I think having conversations with team members of, hey, you know what? I'm glad you work here. And and again, I'd say it to you. I wouldn't say it the same way necessarily to a young lady in my practice, but you're working in my office. You're part of my team. You are now part of my family and I love you. I right. do. I, I love you. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't go over so well. I'm going to go Whitney into the office on Tuesday. And, you know, but she'd be fine with it too, right? But, <laughs> Remember she used to say, oh, I want to be a bro. <laughs> yeah, she used to say, I want to be a bro too. Um, yeah. But but again, I think if your team knows that, I, I, and you tell me if you felt this, because I think it's tough for me to analyze it. I, I wanted my team members to realize that I cared about them first and employed them second, right? That you, you, right. you that I cared more about who you were than what you did, right? And that, right. that you being a person is way more important to me than you being an assistant or a technician. And that if God forbid there was something going on in your life, that is way more important than you straightening some teeth or sitting at the chair and and then unconditionally I'm there to support you. And I think you have to have that relationship with your team members. Otherwise, I think they're afraid to come to you and talk to you about what's really on their mind. What are your I, thoughts on that? No, I completely agree. Um, and, and, and to kind of um, touch on like, it, and it wasn't because um, none of the ladies in the office could handle the conversation. It had nothing to do with that. It was just you making sure that you weren't ca- crossing any bound. Uh, Boundaries. Exactly. And, and I, so I think I did a bad job. I know, of I know that. that the women in your office are extremely strong. And a lot of the ones that I go to and go see, they're very powerful. But I also know it has nothing to do with that. Sometimes there's we got to remember there's there's a there's a spouse type to it as well. And you know, yeah. I was always trying to be mindful and respectful and as they are as well. And yeah. so but no, I I completely agree on working in the office and making sure that you know, I noticed that you you did care about the team. You would ask about how things are um, people are doing and what was going on, and and if something was was broken, how do we fix it, right? And so, right. but it goes back to it's easy for an individual um, because at first glance, for most people when they would come in, it was a little intimidating. It was it was intimidating too because like. I know you, everybody seems this, to be intimidated. Yeah, Everybody's persona. intimidated by me. Everybody, <laughs> every assistant who comes in is like, oh, they told me to be really like, <laughs> they said, don't be worried. He's okay. And, like, so and yet they're think, still scared to death of me for well, weeks. It's because people miss like, I. so be, because of these things, when I would interview people for the practice and, and also just, just to preface on this as well. First of all, anybody that comes into your office, you're going to know if they're going to be qualified or not. So understand the culture in your practice and hire for for culture, because that's what's going to get it to the next level, because you can always have someone do what they need to do. But when you bring someone in because they understand your culture and it becomes that great fit, it changes everything. But I remember when I would interview um, everybody after a certain point, I, I had to have the conversation with them, which is, hey. I know that when you were in your XYZ practices, you were 
a lead, you were a manager, you were this, you were that, and you thrived. I'm here to tell you, when you work for us, you're going to go through this emotional roller coaster where you're going to feel a little inadequate. And it's going to have nothing to do with anything other than discomfort because the standards here are going to be a little higher. We even look at things on how we see people down as uh, at the, our patients down. We don't go across the room and go, um, Dr. Krieger, are you ready? You No, you go walk up to them. Hey, come on in. And then you walk them and you make sure you don't walk. You know, there was just there was this dance that we did. You didn't talk over their chair. You came around and you gave that eye contact. And, and this is the first industry that I've ever been in where every single minute, second was allocated. And so like there was a way you did things. And so when I would talk to them, I would let them know it's going, it's going to happen. I don't care how amazing you are. It's going in like clockwork. It would <laughs> always time. happen. And so, and there was another I mean, thing. But, I but Gustavo, how many places have a training video on how to seat a patient? Just how to seat them, nothing more. How do you seat a patient <laughs> and make them feel special when you seat them? Like, yeah. like the first thing they're learning <laughs> is how we go out to the reception area. No, not a waiting room. How we go out to the reception area and meet our patient and shake their hand and introduce ourselves and walk with them side by side back to the chair. Whole place. And you were in that video. You and Brooke. <laughs> yes. You were in that video, that yes. training video that I, I was made in a up. lot of videos, but yeah. The right way and the wrong way to see the patient. And we wow. didn't yell and we didn't scream, but it had to be an extension that every patient is made to feel like a million bucks. And Period. because they were and they are. And and I remind people that we eat because of them. Like, you exactly. know, so, well, so I, I just don't want to, I want to turn the conversation just a little bit because we're running shorter on time because you and I could do this for days. And okay. if anybody sees us at a meeting, wants to sit down with a Fresca, a Coke, <laughs> a, a beer or whatever, and sit down and do this with us, we invite you to, oh, but I, I, I want to talk a little bit about you lab because that's your job now. And, Absolutely. and I, and I want to talk a little bit, tell people what do you, what can they do with you lab in their practice? Um, and what what would you caution people about doing, particularly based upon that's question number one is what what is where are the limits of what you can do with ULAB and what are the most common things you see people doing to use ULAB for? And then I have a follow up question with you. So um, the thing that I think people should be using ULAB for is um, I notice that a lot of people, because they're afraid to test the waters, um, because what happens is we, we become creature of habits and we're just so used to one thing. And so, you know, I love to see you lab as, as we're very disruptive in this industry. And so when you come into the software and you use it, it's just about giving your, giving you your power, your control back. Um, if you're, you know, looking to, to save your practice money, this is a great way to do it. Um, with the case ceiling fees that we have, um, I tell people all the time that if you were to just download our software, you don't just have software downloaded. You have a team of very well-trained assistants at your disposal. And that's not just for you, that's for your team as well. Um, that's how I became so knowledgeable in this software because when COVID did hit and we were asked to be quarantined, I was doing this from home and I met with some team members of ULAB, like, like Robin Craycraft and, and uh, Joe Siegel. Like these people just took me under their wings and, and, and helped me become who I was, even Dr. Ruz Krasafi. Like these people just were so beneficial to my growth. And so for me with the software to be able to, and now with the new U-Assist feature where you can send your cases, your comprehensive cases, uh, moderate to mild to our team of orthodontists in Ecuador to work up on your cases. And the fee is $85 just to have it go to them. And then this is where I love to tell the clinical team, like the, that specific one that the doctor would like to have work on cases where they can pull it up and they can do some minor corrections because the goal is to get it 90, 85 to 95% of the way there. And then you look at your case and you do your minor tweaks because that's what really matters is helping create a, an efficient workflow. And what I tell people all the time, I remember when you assist was being introduced to me in our practice. And I remember being extremely resistant. And so what I like to do is address the elephant in the room, which is, no, we are not here to take your job. 
We are here to create balance. We are here to be there for you if a team member doesn't show up, if a team member wants to go on vacation, if a machine goes down, if the resident come in on time. For whatever reason, we have our manufacturing facility in Memphis that can take care of all of these things for you. And so that's what I love about what we do. And, and because I know that was difficult for me. And so five years ago, to have a practice fully loaded with everything on like the way we have, it makes perfect sense for your practice to deal, still probably do 75% of in-house aligners and, and printing in-house. But today, it does not make financial sense for you to accumulate all of these things that you need just to print in-house. I do feel like it's extremely important for you to have a printer in your office so that you can still do these mouth guards, these retainers, these same day starts. And these are all the things that you can do with our software. And that's what I love. And so I had to learn to let go of, well, this is my baby and I'm manufacturing everything here. And let learn. remember what I said in the beginning, if I wanted more, I had to learn to let go because the next thing that grew was was the mind, is the software, and understanding clinical preferences and understanding uh, movement and anatomy. And that's why it was extremely important, getting this transition to happen. And that, believe it or not, Dr. Krieger, that's what's happening now when I go travel. It's not just because some assistants feel like, you know, this is the other elephant that we address. I know, I know, you're thinking, great, just another thing added to my plate. Well. To that, I don't know about you, but I know what it's like to have a plate that's empty. And so for me, a full plate is a blessing. And so to that, I say, let's get to eating, you know, <laughs> you know, because I, I know what that's like. And, and I, and I know that it's an absolute privilege. And so any office that I go into and I talk to, and when I talk to the clinical assistants or labs or whoever's going to be taking on this role, I need them to understand that what they are about to do and the software that they touch is an absolute privilege. And it's not because of the software, it's because they get to work side by side with their doctor. And there right. is a lot of vulnerability that takes place when you get to sit down with your doctor and you get to review cases together because sometimes it happens at the end of the day and their shoulders just go, as they're decompressing. And, and if they could only read into what all of that means, and how you can play a role into alleviating that. That's why this software is so important. That's why it's so important for people to understand the transition. And more importantly, our doctors to understand the transition of, hey, I want you to start doing these things for me. But know to all of the orthodontists out there, know that you are not alone. And know that we have a team of people that will do whatever we can to be at your disposal. And that's why I love you. Lab. That's what I love what we that's do. That's awesome. So, so let me ask you this just because of time. I guess there's really three kinds of people out there when it comes to ULAB, right? There's the ULAB user who's really been trained, knows what they're doing, has a Gustavo in their office or somebody like that who's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, they're attending any meetings and they're learning everything they can and they're really pushing the envelope in terms of what they can do. Then there's the person who's never done this before has never, may not even have a printer, or if they do, they use it to print some models to make retainers only. You know, they print a 3D model. That's where we started way back when. You print out a 3D model, you do a suck down, you trim it, and that's it. And then you get the middle ground where people say, well, I'm playing a little bit with it, but I'm really not sure what the capabilities are. You know, I, I, I've done a couple of setups on a single crooked tooth, or I took off some brackets pre, pre D bond so that I could have a retainer waiting. For the first two people, Where's their first step? I'm not worried about the whole, we could get into hours of what they right. should be doing, what they should, right. but just for those two people, not the one who's the regular user is using it right. really well, knows what they're doing. For the person who either doesn't have anything or has dipped their toe so little in the water that they really realize that there's a lot more out there, what advice would you give them in terms of the next step, in terms of a visit to a meeting or contacting you lab and what are the resources available to them? So- to those two people you just described, I was all three of those. Right, I, I was those first two people, and I'm here to tell you, I'm, um, you know, when I when I have the privilege of being on stage and and, in, and showing up in offices, I I don't want you, you know, it's not about it's about the message, not the messenger. 
And so I want people to know that when they see me, they should see themselves. And so I, cause if I can do it, they can do it. So for me, the first thing would be is to um, definitely reach out to us. And then when you reach out to you lab, it's so easy and we want to, we want to show up in your office and we can do a Zoom. We can go to your office. We can do um, a lunch and learn with you. We can, we, can ha- we can go as in depth or as shallow as we need to be. And we can take this into steps. And so for us, we have the videos, our ULAB University that you can go on to and take a look at those videos. I can I can even send them videos. I've even done it even through text because they want to know simple things here and there. But I would always tell anybody that's first getting into this, let's get in this. Let's do an initial training where all we do is show you how to bring in the STL. All we do is show you how to bring in your photos, your x-rays, and just the simplicity of going through this. And then we can go just in those steps. And actually, Dr. Krieger, what we have been doing that we find to be very successful is when you bring in your photos, your initial photos, x-rays, and the STLs, because of the update with ULAB, you can actually send them to you assist. And whenever they bring them back, I show them what their dashboard is going to look like when they start having a relationship with our team of orthodontists and then allow them to do little tweaks here and there with the software. And when they finally get comfortable, they start working up their own cases while at the same time, not, not allowing any time to be wasted for treatment planning and the patient having to wait because our deliveries and our turnarounds are ridiculous. We are having our team of orthodontists we're supposed to say three days, but they have your case back to you ready for you to review in three hours. And then wow. when you click the, the cart to order your aligners, and here's the other thing. I always tell people that, you know, at these events and at these symposiums, you know, we want to be in your face. We want to be all in your face. Hey, look at us, look at us, look at us. But in your practice, we want to be in the back. And that's where we allow your office to um, enter in their um, company logo so that it could be on your custom packaging for you. So when your aligners are delivered, it will have your logo on your box because as you know, the importance of marketing, that is like extreme key right there is to make this about you and not about us. And so anytime I'm working with an office that's just learning these things, I will always talk to them about, hey, let's just take these baby steps. Let's download the software. Let's have a conversation because the one thing I remind them of, we are not going anywhere and you are not limited to a quantity amount of calls or emails or Zooms. We're always going to be here. So as we finish, if someone wants to reach out, what, how did they do it? What's the best way? Oh, uh, man, I I never call our office, (laughs) but definitely go to uh, ulab.com. Um, You can actually reach directly to me and I can point you in the right direction. My phone number is 817-480-5551. I can be reached at gustavo.sanchez at ulabsystems.com. And um, I can- Gustavo.sanchez at ulabsystems.com. Gustavo.sanchez at ulabsystems.com. That number again, no, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) But I want to say thank you. It, it's always fun hanging out with you, Gustavo. I know we'll do it many more times in the future. And it's it's special rewarding. <laughs> You're changing the the environment out there. You're really doing good work for everybody and helping them. Um, and it's just so great to see you on the same stage with the people who originally taught you, which is amazing. I will always I will always be a student. And I I I, I my goal when I walk into these offices is to do my absolute best to give them, even if it's a little, of what you and I had. Amen, brother. And I'm going to leave it with that. Just uh, (laughs) thank you for being here today, man. And just want to say thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much.